channel and to a brand new video. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the five essential shoe styles that you all need in your wardrobe. These are the shoe styles that I would replace in a heartbeat if for some reason they left my life, either from old age or illness. Now, over the years, some of my shoe purchasing decisions have been absolute disasters. And because I'm such a caring and loving person, that's absolutely true. I don't want you to make the same mistakes either. We, we look out for each other here. Now, as I've honed in on my personal style, I found that these are the five styles that I have consistently been gravitating towards. These are the styles that I found it easy to style with my wardrobe. And these are the styles that perform consistently well when it comes to cost per wear. And if this is the first time that you've stumbled across me, then hello, nice to meet you. My name is Virginia. I have been on YouTube now for almost a year. I've been running my blog, whatvwore.com for over three years. And I've been on Instagram for, I kind of remember, probably as long as you have, forever. By day I work as a lawyer full time, but in order to keep those creative juices flowing and my sanity intact, I run this as a side hustle. If you enjoy seeing bits about personal style, workwear and handbags, then be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any more of my amazing content. So let's talk the five shoe styles that'll go the distance. He's going the distance. He's going for first essential shoe style category is the fancy flat. Now I appreciate this is a broad category, but we are a broad group of people and what I might consider to be fancy, most of you guys might consider to be really, really boring. Offense taken. I have two styles that I want to share with you in this fancy flat category. The first style is the loafer. <laughs> Now, I love me a pair of loafers. You might recognize these as my Gucci loafers, which are coming up to their first year anniversary of being in my wardrobe. And yes, we're having a party. Yes, you're invited. Yes, bring your kids and family. BYO drinks though. These loafers I consider to be the ultimate style chameleon. I wear these to work. I wear these on weekends. I love how you can dress them up and you can dress them down. I love how they're polished, but they're comfortable. And I love how they straddle both the masculine and the feminine. Now, there are so many different styles of loafers that are available on the market from high street all the way up to high end. In terms of high end options, there are so many iconic ones out there, like the Prada loafers or the Todd's loafers, but there are heaps of great quality ones that you can get from contemporary labels as well, like Tory Burch and Sam Edelman and Everlane. Regardless of your budget, you'll be able to find a classic loafer that you'll be able to easily integrate into your wardrobe. And I will link a few options down in the description section below. Now, if you do have your eye on these particular Gucci loafers, then I do have a hot tip for you. And that tip is, to make sure that you get them re-soled with the rubber sole because the original leather sole that these guys come in is super slippery and super smooth, which means that if you are prone to accidents or you are clumsy like me, then there is no doubt that you will end up falling on your bum on a flat footpath in the middle of say a busy shopping mall, like Pitt Street Mall, for example. I don't know, just saying as a hypothetical. Now the second fancy flat style that deserves to take up some of your wardrobe real estate is the pointed toe flat. Now a pointed toe flat, I consider to be much dressier than a round toe flat, hence it being fancy on the fancy flat scale. And if you're petite like me, then a pointed toe flat also works to visually elongate your frame, tricking the eye and making people think that you're a little bit taller. That is until people come right up to you and then they realize that you're really, really short. And similar to my loafers, I've enjoyed wearing my pointed toe flats to work as well as on the weekends. I have two styles here that I've pulled from my wardrobe that I've really loved wearing. The first style that I have here is the Nicholas Kirkwood Bayer flat. These have a pointed toe and they've also got this metallic detail on the heel here, which make them a little bit fancier. And the second pair that I have is the Natalie flat here from Sarah Flint. I've actually got this one in both the Saddle Viquetta as well as the Navy Suede. And for all of you royalists out there, you might recognize these as the pair that Meghan Markle wore when she stepped out with Prince Harry for the first time. She put Sarah Flint on the radar for a lot of people and these continue to be Sarah Flint's best selling style. Now moving on to the next essential shoe style that'll go the distance is black heels. And if I was starting my shoe collection from scratch, then I would first prioritize the classic black pump 
just like one here that I've prepared earlier. Now for something as simple as a black pump, there are so many different versions and iterations of a black pump that you could get. The ones that I have here are a pointed toe, black suede, stiletto heel style, and they're probably on the dressier end of the black pump spectrum. But you could go for another black pump style, like a round toe style with smooth leather and a block heel. Both of the styles are still classic, but they give off a completely different look, proving my point that a black pump is such a classic wardrobe staple. Now having a pair of trusty black heels your wardrobe will take care of you for work, for special events. It always appears on fashion editors' essentials list for a reason because it is so versatile. And I have another style here that I wanted to share with you in the black heels category and it's a style that I finally checked off my wish list when I picked it up a couple of years ago and it is the Dior Jadior Slingbacks. They're a bit more of a modern take on your traditional black pump. They're a very comfortable and walkable six and a half centimeter heel. These days I've completely lost my appetite for wearing high heels. Now when it comes to black heels I find that I've been gravitating towards styles that provide a little bit of a textural element. So the first pair that I shared with you are made of a black suede and this this pair here from Dior is actually made from what Dior describes as a technical fabric and so it's like a heavyweight woven material and it adds a little bit of interest to my outfits. While I might have started off during my early black heel wearing days to relying on the smooth calf leather options that are more the traditional ones that we're seeing in store and I still really love those but I also love how you can inject a little bit of your personal style and add a little bit of interest to your outfit even with just a humble black heel that has a little bit of a textural component. Now the two styles that I've shared with you are both on the luxury end of the spectrum but there are so many black heels out there that you can get from the high street and from contemporary labels as well such as Nine West or Whitner if you're in Australia. They are a classic style and they are well worth the investment. Now moving on to the next shoe style and depending on where you live in the world and the climate that you live in you might be able to get away with wearing this year round and the style that I wanted to share with you is the Chelsea boot. I've only got one pair of Chelsea boots in my wardrobe and they are a classic pair from RM Williams. What distinguishes a Chelsea boot from a regular boot is the fact that they've got this elasticized gusset here. Now personally I consider RM Williams boots to be the creme de la creme when it comes to Chelsea boots. RM Williams boots, for the benefit of those of you that don't live in Australia, enjoy a bit of an iconic status here. They have a bit of a history, some consider these to be the national boot of Australia and they have gone up in price so much in recent times that they are now squarely within the luxury category. What started off as a workman's boot has now become very much a fashionable icon. Now I found these Chelsea boots to be incredibly easy to style. I think that they are very polished with the arm and toe that they have here. Not quite pointy and not quite round and I have had no trouble styling these for both work and on the weekends. They're incredibly comfortable, they're incredibly durable. I have these in the rubber sole and I would recommend that you also get them in the rubber sole. There's also the leather option but that's very slippery particularly if you are clumsy like me and fall flat on your face in Pitt Street Mall, for example, just for example, may not have happened in actual life. And I've had these now for almost two years and I'm not sure whether this is going to come up on camera, but a lot of the indentations that you see on the sole are still there. I mean, they've worn down, but only slightly. Considering how much I've relied on these, I'm really quite impressed. Another question I always seem to get asked with this style as well is whether I prefer the classic brown or the black color. And I tried both. But I obviously prefer the brown because they're in my collection. But I think the question stems from whether or not the brown has been easy to pair. And in my opinion, when it comes to the classic RM Williams boots, I actually think the brown colour is better and I've had absolutely no issues with pairing these. I think that with an iconic shoe like this, you can't go wrong with sticking with the original. I will have these linked in the description section below, but I'll also link some other Chelsea boot styles that have been on my radar down below for you as well. If these aren't your cup of tea, then there might be others there that might be your cup of tea or your other beverage of choice. I have a cameo! I'm shooting a video about five essential shoe styles. Do you have your five essential shoe styles? Yeah, I love a good sandal. Mm. Uh, a thong. A thong? Just one. Moving on to the next essential shoe style that you all need in your wardrobe and that is the white sneaker. 
This is a bit of a no-brainer because they're currently in fashion at the moment. I think since the pandemic, I have completely been out of practice when it comes to heels. And so I'm really enjoying how white sneakers are in fashion and they're currently accepted in the smart casual workplace. I've been wearing them to work as well. I'm making sure that I'm choosing more of my polish styles to wear to the office, obviously. But there are so many different white sneakers out there. I think the easy part is styling them, but I think the hard part is keeping them clean. I have three styles that are on rotation that I wanted to share with you. The first style is my Nike Air Max ones. I think the style is almost as old as me, but I really love how they're a chunky shoe without being too chunky because there are lots of retro chunky style shoes there at the moment, like from New Balance and Reebok. Also just the Nike Dunk Highs, those old school basketball shoes. I really love the look of those, but they're really, really chunky and they overwhelm my petite frame. And so this is a really nice middle ground to get a little bit of that chunk, but not too much chunk. And these have been comfortable from the get go. Sometimes with sneakers, you buy them and you have to wear them in, which is just baffling considering they're meant to be comfortable. But these are a pair of sneakers where you don't have to do that. And the next pair that I wanted to share with you is continuing on with the retro theme. This is probably an older style than the Nike Air Max ones that I shared with you. These are the Converse High Tops. I think this style is called the Chuck High 70. And this was a little bit of a nostalgic purchase for me. I wore my Converse high tops heaps when I was in high school. I had a white pair. This is a beige pair. I had a white pair that I remember completely trashing. They were so comfortable after I wore them in and I wore them for years, absolutely destroyed them. And so it's really nice to add a little bit of my youth to my middle-aged wardrobe. Now something that's worthwhile noting is that these are so so comfortable. I think if you are an old school Converse wearer then you will remember that the shoes aren't the most comfortable shoes to start off with but as soon as I tried these on the sole was so noticeably spongy. I did some research and I have found out that Converse was since acquired by Nike. That might be old news to some but that was news to me but what they've done is they've reworked the sole to make these actually comfortable and not only are these really cute but they're really really comfortable. And the last style of white sneaker that I wanted to share with you is a style that you would have seen everywhere because they seem to be the most popular style of white sneaker that's available at the moment. It is this pair here that I have from Everlane. This is a really polished minimal white sneaker and this is made from recycled leather. This one I consider to be my polished and dressy white sneaker and so I actually have worn these into the office. Looking at these up close they've already got some scuffs and things that I have to tend to probably after I finish filming this video but in terms of comfort compared to the two retro styles that I shared with you these are the least comfortable out of the lot. Doesn't mean that they're uncomfortable but it just means in comparison to the others they are just not as comfortable. They're very polished but they're not as soft and squishy and I found that to be the case with the other popular styles of white sneakers that are available at the moment as well. They're just not as plushy and as cushy as I would like. I like my sneaker to be a little bit spongy I think. And the final shoe category that I have to share with you is a pair of sandals. Now I know that sandals can be broken down into heeled sandals and flat sandals and while I love me a heeled sandal and I have many in my wardrobe I consider that a flat sandal is a shoe essential and so for the purposes of this video I'm going to be focusing on my flat sandals. Now my flat sandal of choice is one that I'm currently wearing and so I'm just going to rip off my feet right now and show you is a pair of Birkenstocks. The Birkenstock Arizona is my jam. So much so that in the summer I have this prominent Birkenstocks tan that doesn't fade until a couple of months after summer is over. It's probably about March or April where the Birkenstocks tan finally fades off my feet. It's gross but it's also a really nice memento from summer. Now this pair I've had now for a couple of years and I find the style just really agrees with my feet and it's just an incredibly comfortable style to wear. Anyone who's owned a pair of Birkenstocks you know what I'm talking about. The pair that I had before this are a pair that I've completely trashed but I'm just going to share with you because it's a little bit disgusting. It is this pair here. The sole has all come undone. I bought these in Germany when I was there in 2017. Pre-pandemic travel. But these are a patent burgundy style and I came back to Australia and everyone asked me how I got this colorway and I was able to do a little bit of a hair flick and tell them that I'm sorry I got these in Germany they're not available here I loved being able to say that and before that I had a navy pair that have been completely trashed they have been laid to rest now and I bought those on my honeymoon about seven years ago and so the Birkenstock Arizona has been my summer staple they are on my feet for you know 
five to six months of the year because they are so incredibly comfortable. I love that they're in fashion now too. I know that for a long time people considered them to be a really ugly shoe. I know that at a particular law firm that I used to work at in the casual dress code policy they even said no Birkenstocks but I remember breaking those rules anyway when I was heavily pregnant because Birkenstocks were the only things that agreed with my feet. Now when I'm not wearing a pair of my Birkenstock Arizonas and I also have another pair of summer sandals here that are on rotation this was a pair that my husband and my sons bought for me and they are a pair of the saltwater sandals. These are also iconic. These are really, really comfortable as well and they're a little bit daintier in comparison to the Birkenstock Arizonas. But these are really great because they're very hard wearing and they're very fuss free. You can wear these in the water. They've got a rubber sole and they're incredibly comfortable and lightweight. And so when I am feeling a little bit dressier in the summer, then I wear these. But for the most part, I'm wearing my Birkenstock Arizonas. So that's it guys, that's a wrap. I hope that you enjoyed my roundup of the five essential shoe styles that will go the distance. If you like this video, then be sure to let me know by hitting that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.